So today I'm really excited because we get to talk about penile health. Uh, but but also not to just look at the superficial aspects of it, but truly understand what penile health is all about. And that's why the uh, topic's uh, name was Inside and Out. Uh, this is a part of the whole protocol series. And uh, let's get started. Um, the first thing that to, to realize is that, uh, you know, if you look at the statistics, they're actually kind of staring, staggering about male sexual dysfunction. Uh, they did a study in the Massachusetts Male Aging Study on sexual dysfunction. And what they found is that approximately 52% of men will somewhere along their life uh, develop um, some kind of sexual dysfunction. Okay, that's not so bad because you go, well, eventually, if you get old enough, that may happen. But what was really surprising to me was the fact that a lot of these gentlemen, 40% of them, will start having trouble at the age of 40. So those that, that in my opinion, is way young. And what it's telling us that we need to be very vigilant to try to understand why that is happening, because I do believe that even in my last 30 years of practicing urology, this is becoming an earlier an earlier trend, uh, which we never used to see until later in life. It's estimated that about 18 to 30 million men in the United States are affected by it. That is huge, okay? So let's try to figure out, how, let's try to understand it and see if we can make a difference. As uh, you need to understand, is male, male sexual dysfunction has to do a lot with um, blood coming into the penis and blood leaving the penis, so a lot about blood circulation. It has to do with the innervation to the penis, so making sure that the nerves that are responsible for the sensation, erection, and ejaculation at all working properly. And also that there is a good connection with the brain. And I'm not just talking about uh, desire, uh, but also a good uh, control of it and how sometimes neurotransmitters, stress, etc., can affect this uh, condition. If you look at nerve health, uh, what people sometimes tend to forget is that any lesion that you might have in the lumbar spine, uh, L4, L5, and even sacral injuries are very significant and can have a huge effect on uh, erectile dysfunction. So all of the, all of you that are snowboarders or even can just fall and hit your sacrum, uh, people that have done gymnastics, they tend to be more aware of that because my son is a gymnast and sometimes they will have uh, sacral injuries. But as you know, a lot of men have had lumbar laminectomies. They've had issues with uh, that junction between the lumbar and the sacral spine. Remember that a lot of the nerves that control erectile function are sitting in that area. So sometimes people forget about it and they go, oh my God, that happened like five years ago, 10 years ago. Uh, how can that be affecting me now? Trust me when I tell you it can affect you. One simple way to look at some of these injuries is via thermography. The nice thing about thermography is there's no radiation to it, but it can really point out the areas that could be uh, causing uh, if, uh, issues with, with erections. And if you look at this picture, you can see a lot of redness, which shows usually uh, the area of concern. Uh, and if you look at the sacrum, which is uh, between the two buttocks, uh, you see that there is not only red, but there's also a little bit of white, indicating there is uh, something going on in that area. And you can tell this person is really stressed out and their cervical and thoracic, upper thoracic spine are being affected as well. What people forget is back health is super important. And there's kind of like this vicious cycle where not only does it affect the nerves that are responsible for sensation, erections, ejaculation, but if you have a muscular pain in your back, it's very difficult for you to perform uh, in your sexual life. And therefore, that's going to also limit your ability to be sexually active. Another thing that people tend to forget is that, believe it or not, erections are just as good as your heart is. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that if you have a situation where 
uh, you have trouble with atherosclerotic plaques disease, if you have uh, diabetes or anything that could be affecting the uh, inner lining of the blood vessels, including the smooth muscles around the blood vessels, um, that what is going to happen is not only are you going to have limited blood flow to your heart, but if your heart is not pumping appropriately, you're not going to get any blood flow going into your penis. So we have to be very mindful of that because you know, I think that's something that a lot of us kind of give for granted and we forget about it. You know, we want to take a Cialis or, you know, we want some medication to improve the blood flow. But more important, I think, is, and both the Mayo Clinic and the Harvard uh, agree with this, is that there is a lot of hidden cardiac and heart disease that can be sometimes silent. I mean, people may have a normal EKG, they may have, you know, some uh, no pain in the heart no, with exercise, but if you actually do a heart scan and you go into it a little deeper, you're gonna find out a lot of these people will have calcifications in the heart and they're gonna have a limited amount of blood flow uh, going into the penile arteries. So, Blood flow is super important, and not only is the blood flow that is coming in into the penis important, but also the venous outflow. So think about an erection as, in a way, filling up a bathtub, and you have the spigot that brings the water in, but if you don't have a drain that actually shuts down appropriately, you're never going to be able to fill up the bathtub. That is also true of erections. So in this drawing, you can see the, the red little round uh, portions. This is, as you know, the arterial blood flow in. There is the dorsal in the in the 12 o'clock. You see the two arteries there. But you also, very important that you see the main arteries, one on each side, uh, on inside the corpora. And if those vascularities, if those arteries are full of plaque, if they're fibrotic, you're not going to get enough blood flow in, even in the presence of medications like the, the Cialis and the Viagras. Now, let's say that, that you're lucky and the blood flow into the penis is really good, but somehow you've had an injury of the fascia. So if you look at the fascia, you realize that it wraps around the two corpora cavernosa, the ones that look like a pair of eyes looking at you, and the corpora spongiosa, which looks more like the mouth, that is the urethra, and that is the, the, the little coat around it that protects it. So the fascia wraps around all of this, Strength and function of that fascia is super important because that's what's going to control the veins shutting down appropriately and being able to then hold the blood that is coming in inside the penis. So once again, some men may have good blood flow in, but they may have something that we call a venous leak, which means those veins are not going to shut down and the blood is coming and leaving as quickly as it came in. And when that happens, you're not going to be able to maintain an erection. What else is important? You know, uh, another thing that is super important is hormones. But remember that hormones have to do more about desire and libido and not often as much with actual erections, although that's not always the case. And I have had men that by, you know, improving their hormone function, they've improved their quality of their erections as well as their libido. Uh, we know testosterone is a uh, very important male hormone. As you know, it's an anabolic steroid. It's important in muscle and bone building. Uh, we know that it's a cholesterol derivative. So for all of you people that are in anti-cholesterol medication, a lot of times you're shooting your own foot in that you're not going to be able to build a brick house if you don't have bricks around. So if you really lower the cholesterol, that's going to aggravate the formation of testosterone and the adrenal uh, hormones as well, which sometimes can buffer for lack of the actual testicular uh, hormones. Uh, we know that 95% of the testosterone is made in the testicle, but 5% of them can be made in the adrenal glands. Normal levels, of course, there's nothing like when you were 18 years old. Um, uh, I can vouch for this. My son is 20, and it's kind of fascinating to see hormones in motion. Uh, the, the levels range anywhere from uh, 1,000 to 2,000 in the younger men. And as men get older, unfortunately, they do tend to lose uh 
uh, testosterone. And now the people will tell you that any level between 292 and 900 is normal. But I can honestly tell you I've never met a gentleman who was actually feeling anywhere near normal unless their testosterone was uh, around between probably 500 and 900. Uh, so even though the medical definition is uh, less than 300, uh, like once again, I said, it's really is not a very good level for the average men, primarily if they're super active with sports and if they have a very active brain life, meaning they're at work uh, related, they have to be sharp mentally. Uh, lower testosterone is not conducive with that. We know that uh, the testosterone levels decline 5% per decade. For, and I'm sorry to tell you that it starts at age 30 and it doesn't get any better. Uh, as a matter of fact, it continues to do so. The reason why obesity uh, can be a problem is because obese people tend to make more estrogens. And as we know, estrogens tend to compete with testosterone. So all of you who may be already having a testosterone replacement, make sure that you always know not only your free and total testosterone, but that your physicians are also checking for estrogens. 50% uh, of men over the age of 55 are already hypogonadic. Uh, so that's a pretty uh, significant number. I think this is now, as I was mentioning earlier, happening earlier in life. We suspect that some of the pseudoestrogens and some of the other toxins that we're exposed to on a daily basis uh, are major contributors to this. If we look at what happens when people have low testosterone, uh, remember that uh, men are going to start feeling like uh, their muscles are getting not only weaker, but they're actually getting thinner and that their bone uh, density also can be affected and that they're starting to notice more body fat around their body. So they're starting to exchange fat for uh, muscle and they're going to start developing that pouch, the you know, the, the around their belly. Uh, fatigue. Fatigue is one of the things that people will just say, you know, I know I go and, and exercise because I know that's what I'm supposed to do, but I just don't have any energy. When I get home from work, I just can barely move out of the couch. Uh, the grease libido we all know about. Ejaculatory volume, believe it or not, is also hormone dependent. And the rigidity and the tumescence of the penis as well. Symptoms of prostatitis and prostate infections are aggravated by low testosterone. And so is prostate cancer. Uh, believe it or not, men who have low prostate, I mean, low testosterone uh, are more likely to develop prostate cancer. And not only as so, but also they tend to be a little bit more aggressive. So unlike popular belief, uh, you know, having a proper level of testosterone will actually protect you. The other thing that people don't realize is how important it is. If you have low testosterone, that's going to affect your cholesterol and LDL and your triglycerides. So it's important that you replenish them. And that's going to really help your, your picture. Believe it or not, the beats, not only the heart has improved the coronary blood flow, but even the strength of the beat of the heart has been really correlated with levels of testosterone. Uh, important too, as in, in a society where we're all, uh, you know, working too hard and not eating very well, and we develop insulin resistance, which is a precursor to diabetes, uh, low testosterone is going to make that even worse. And as a matter of fact, you can reverse it with proper levels of the male hormone. Benefits are going to be improved muscle to fat ratio. The skin quality is going to be stronger. The bones are going to be healthier. Uh, but more important is memory. I mean, if we think that having a belly is bad, feeling like you go into a room where you're, you know, trying to remember uh, something important and you can, you know, you're trying to tap into that and it's not coming out, that's not a good thing. Uh, and then developing anxiety. Anxiety is not something that happens to men very often, but as the testosterone levels go down and they develop that, it can be extremely um, disturbing to them and is so easily reversed by just balancing your hormones. So what I would say is please find somebody uh, around your area who can really help you analyze these for you because it can be one of those silent uh, things that can really be a major factor in your life. Believe it or not, when they check your testosterone, make them uh, also test some other things. It's not just uh, testosterone that works in isolation. Thyroid hormone and adrenal hormones are super important. Uh, the same with estrogen. So make sure that the person that is helping you out 
is going to be very knowledgeable. And believe it or not, one of the things that rules uh, testosterone production and other hormones are the little, little neurotransmitters, which are in our brains, and they can uh, correlate with uh, production of hormones and vice versa. We now know that estrogens can, uh, for example, affect uh, dopamine levels in, in, in women and in men as well. And the opposite is also true. Dopamine in men can affect testosterone. So just a little summary, uh, in men particularly, dopamine uh, has a lot to do with libido and sexual reward and usually associated with testosterone levels. Uh, GABA, for example, has to do with relaxation and also better performance. It also helps you uh, at night to sleep better. And serotonin in men, a lot to do with that ejaculation time, so you don't have to worry about premature ejaculation, uh, but you can be uh, totally in your own timing. Uh, so this is important. This can be easily tested by your physician. So make sure that you're well informed enough that you can go to them and say, okay, this is what we need to do. Uh, just to remind you once again, for in order to, for you to get a good uh, sexual function, we need to look at nerves, circulation, and we need to make sure that all the brains and neurotransmitters are working uh, perfectly. Uh, back health, uh, we talked about why is back health important because the nerves that are going to the to your penis are um, related to your back. So if you're having issues, make sure you get physical therapy, osteopathy acupuncture, there's so many good modalities. And if everything else fails, you can get injections, uh, injections of the sacrum, believe it or not, are not painful. And if you're gonna be using platelet rich plasma for penile injections, you can use some of that for the back where you can inject some of these ligaments and make them stronger and therefore improve the quality of your back. Uh, for those of you who have a phobia of, of uh, injections, don't be, uh, afraid because shockwave lithotripsy, which we've talked about before, about how good it is for the penis, and we will talk about that again. It can also be extremely beneficial in treating the lower back and the sacrum, causing resolution of chronic back pain and improving uh, the flow and the um, uh, of, of all the blood vessels and creating new blood vessels and in really improving the function of the ligaments. So you don't have to worry about needles. Um, that will improve the nerve health, like we talked about, and the muscular health. Now, the next thing we already talked about hormones and we talked about neurotransmitters is very easy. You just have to find somebody who can help you in your area. Blood flow. We talked about if you don't have a good systemic pump, if your heart is not pumping appropriately, uh, that's going to be really impossible to get any blood flow into the penis. There's people that have extremely good blood flow systemically, but when they get to the local level, uh, they, they are not able to 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 get enough blood into the penis itself. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that and how we can overcome it. Natural remedies in, in general for a good systemic blood flow and better heart and cardiac uh, rehabilitation and health. Of course, uh, believe it or not, eating enough calories is important. We just need to be able to eat the right proper uh, level in the, the right calories. A paleolithic diet is very protective and it really will lower uh, some of the uh, problems with cholesterol, etc. Organic foods whenever you can. That's going to minimize the number of toxins that could be affecting your hormones and therefore decreasing your sexual function and desire. Uh, amino acid supplementation uh, could be very simple thing to do and it are the building blocks and that sometimes can you can put it in your um, green drinks in the morning or um, so be mindful of that avoid caffeine and alcohol in extremes sugar and refined carbs are also very uh, difficult for heart disease a lot of that uh, the sugar as you know the people that have the worst hearts are the poor diabetics they have a lot of vascular disease and no wonder they have severe issues with erectile function avoid cereal fibers and avoid milk products i mean milk is okay okay for children uh, but be careful as you get older not to do milk and if you're going to do milk, it's a thought that goat cheeses and uh, tend to be a little bit healthier and uh, less likely to cause problems. Avoid chronic stress. That's easier said than done for most of us. But uh, sometimes we cannot 
remove the stress of our lives, but we can sometimes learn how to cope with them via uh, exercise, meditation, prayer, uh, whichever way you feel closest to being able to do that. And of course, tobacco, marijuana, and other uh, medications like that are vasoconstrictors and can really uh, cause problems with uh, the blood vessels like we were talking about. Uh, if those get constricted and they get small, and tobacco is particularly bad about that, you're going to have trouble with erections. So look at your lifestyle and see how you can improve your general health. So what can we do about local blood flow? Is there anything we can do that can make a difference? And I can tell you that, you know, you and I've already talked to you about uh, platelet-rich plasma, so I'm not going to be wasting too much of your time, but just to kind of uh, recap a little bit. It's a way of getting uh, your own blood, uh, uh, kind of concentrate your growth factors, injecting it in areas of your body that you don't have, that you have maybe lesions that are not healing appropriately. Extremely useful, as you know, in, in joints, and that's been done quite a bit now by even orthopedic surgeons and even in, in diabetic ulcers. And of course, we've used it extensively in sexual function with excellent results. And the one nice thing about this picture is that if you have people that are young and healthy, uh, PRP alone will be a, kind of like a nice uh, scaffolding where then the stem cells can come in and, and start growing and repairing the tissue for you. Uh, sometimes what we do in our office is if we have a PRP that we feel is not a good enough quality and we have a significant issue uh, primarily in people that have been radiated or have had a radical surgery and we're trying to reconstruct sexual function. In those patients, a lot of times we will be adding amniotic uh, stem cells. Uh, and that really seems to you know, power up um, the healing ability. Um, the next thing that you guys uh, are already familiar with is the shockwave lithotripsy. I cannot tell you enough how powerful this technique is. The more that I used it, the more I think it's, it's impressive. Uh, not only does it create new blood vessels by creating micro damage, where the body then responds by creating, you know, and calling growth factors, including and then uh, also stem cells. But I think one of the things that uh, the, the that is really good for is to break up some of the atherosclerotic plaques and. And I've been, you know, and also like not just the peronis disease and the calcifications, but the fibrosis that can sometimes um, kind of envelop the corpora cavernosa. So if the poor corpora cavernosa, uh, which are the two erectile bodies inside the penis, are stiff because they're fibrotic or calcified, no wonder it's not going to be able to expand and repose and respond to improve blood flow into the penis. So breaking that up with these shockwaves can be incredibly powerful. I mean, I just had recently two, two men that had significant Peyronie's disease. I mean, I'm talking about uh, almond size or bigger Peyronie's uh, plaques. And I can honestly tell you that with two treatments, both of these people get rid of these plaques completely. So if you can do that to something that big, imagine all the micro uh, disease, which is even easier to treat. Uh, no wonder we're getting such an excellent results with this. Now, if you look at um, how, when, how when we do the shockwave, how we treat, I wanted you to see that not only are we treating the shaft of the penis and we're treating the corpora cavernosa, but remember the shaft of the penis is only showing maybe like, you know, I would say 40% of the, of the erectile bodies. Uh, remember that the two corpora cavernosa will then migrate behind your retropubic bone and those are the two little, um, they look like little wings. You have the midline of the penis, and then you have those two. They look like, uh, would I say, um, I don't know, C's, maybe a C. But that's, that, that is important because we, when we treat with the shockwave, we also treat this area. And believe it or not, because that's so close to the prostate, the one thing most men are telling us, they said, not only are we getting exceptional uh, results uh, in our erections, but more importantly, they will tell you right away, hey, you know, we forgot to tell you, but we were getting up three to four times a night, and now we're getting up maybe once. So one of the benefits, not only are we treating the 
the hidden part of the erectile bodies, but we're also getting incredible response of the prostate to this improved blood flow into the area. So we're really excited about that. I think that the other thing that we were talking about the shock wave is we were saying how important the fascia, okay, or that the lining that you can think of it as a um, fascia is, as you know, what holds a lot of our body together. Otherwise, we would be like blobs. But the fascia that we were talking around the corpora cavernosa and then the spongiosum and how important that is in order to shut down the venous outflow. So that way the blood can stay into the penis longer. You can get a better erection. And not only can it get fuller and more firm, but also it can the erection can last a lot longer. That is having a corpora, I mean, a, that that fascia has to be really, really healthy. If it's flabby, those veins are never going to shut down. If it's too fibrotic, the, then what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to expand and get a big enough erection. And I really believe that one of the places where the shockwave is really helping us out is not just breaking down the calcifications in the blood vessels, but really getting that, that sheath a lot healthier. We know that, the, you know, and, and, and I think, you know, and I have to confess, not being a man, it's it sometimes, I don't always, you know, I try to be sensitive um, about, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years. Uh, I have a son, uh, a husband, and four brothers. So I, I thought I knew a lot about this stuff, but we can always learn some more. But I had a patient uh, recently tell me, you know, it's just, it's not just about what I look like when I'm erect and whether I can get an erection or not, but if I'm in the if I'm in the gym and I'm taking a shower, I'm very self-conscious about the size of my penis and other men kind of judging me. And to be honest with you, it never occurred to me, but after he said that, I thought, wow, that may be more common than we realize. So we know that that fear of penile um the look of the penis is super important. Uh, we're lucky that if we've been in an established relationship for a long time, that's not an issue. But if somebody recently loses a spouse or they go through a divorce or they're, you know, whatever the situation, they're, you know, getting into new relationships that can be even uh, a situation where it can be very fearful for them. So a lot of people are looking at ways of improving not only the the health of the penis and a better erection, but also what does it look like? Uh, outwardly, even in a relaxed state. We know that, uh, is like we were talking about, it's not just about the function of the penis, but it's also the looks of the penis. Size does matter, and for a lot of people, that is very important. So why not meet people and help them accomplish what's important to them? We know, believe it or not, that impotence leads to penile atrophy through corporal fibrosis. That's that sheath I was telling you around the corpora, how that can become really stiff and therefore not allowing the proper expansion of it and limiting the quality of the erection. And that's due to, that's due to uh, chronic hypoxia, which another fancy way to say that you're not getting enough uh, oxygen into that area and the tissue reacts by becoming fibrotic. In the cases uh, where people have been impotent and have not been able to get an erection for a long time, um, they can, you can see sometimes shortening of the penis anywhere from half a centimeter to five centimeters. I know when I first looked at that data, I'm like, oh my goodness, five centimeters, that's like incredibly uh, crazy. But I think those extreme cases are people who have undergone surgical procedures and they've had nerve damage. But normally, of course, we wouldn't see five centimeter atrophies. I think the average would be more like between 0.5 and 1.5. But there's no doubt that that old uh, adage of if you don't use it, you lose it. Um, it. It's serious and that we need to to try to not allow men to go for that period of uh, time without help. So what can be done um, uh, to cause better penile enhancement and function? Uh, no doubt we talked already about the, you know, the improved lifestyle, the improved cardiac disease. I will tell you one thing. Uh, pretty much 
uh, whenever I see people now with erectile dysfunction, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I've been sending some of these people for heart scans, and I've already found two men who were runners, and you know you would have never suspected them of having uh, occult heart disease. And one of them had like 80% occlusion of one of his uh, uh, coronary arteries. So I'm taking this a bit more serious and I have uh, less of a reflex now in have them be evaluated properly by a cardiologist, depending what the presentations are. So that put aside, then what can be done? Well, the first thing that we can done, uh, do is like we've already talked about the prior shot. And that's when we actually do go ahead and, you know, concentrate your own uh, uh, growth factors, we have platelet rich plasma, and some people we can add stem cells, and we're going to inject that inside the corpora. So, in those two little eyes that you see, that those are the corpora, we actually go there and put the PRP. Uh, it's been phenomenal. People have had not only increased size of the penis, but I think the most important thing is people will tell you that. The firmness uh, has been remarkable and the improved sensation, which is really important because as men start getting older, uh, sensation is a problem. And for the poor guys that had premature ejaculation, all of a sudden that's a good thing because they have normal sensation. But for the average male who's always had normal sensation, all of a sudden the glans penis can, tends to become really numb. So achieving a uh, erection can be more difficult and achieving ejaculation and the whole uh, process can be very frustrating for them and their partners. So the P-Shot is extremely helpful in improving sensation. So not just overall health and, and, and firmness and length, but sensation. Now, Dr. Perito, uh, who is brilliant, has now come up. Uh, he said he's the one that has done a lot of studies. Uh, in He has a clinic in Florida, and he says it's not just what the penis looks like when it's erect, but if the penis looks very uh, small or atrophic when it's relaxed, um, that that can be very damaging emotionally. So he has developed a procedure where he actually injects at the 3 o'clock and the 9 o'clock position with a... Um, you know, fillers, the same fillers that women use for their faces, like the jubiderms and things like that. Essentially, they are like collagen. And you can put it that at the three and nine o'clock position and inc increase the girth of the penis as significantly. Um, great results. Anytime you use collagen, eventually the body can break that down. So the way that we have modified it in our clinic, since we already use PRP inside the penis, is we save some of the the PRP itself, and not only do we put the collagen in the three and nine o'clock position, but we actually also inject that same area with the PRP. So what we're seeing is the thickness of the skin and the and the appearance of the penile shaft is not only bigger, but it really has that uh, vitality that that you know it just looks like. Uh, a lot healthier. And so men have been really pleased with both the external look and, and also the, the, the look from the inside out. The other thing that we do in, at the Hope uh, Clinic uh, is that we combine, of course, the, the P-Shot with the Girth Max and then the, but that the chalk wave, you know, by breaking up that fibrosis, um, no wonder we're getting people uh, saying that their girth is significant and their length of penis has been significant in a lot of these people, primarily if they have, a, they have undergone uh, treatments for cancer where they've had radiation. And as you can imagine, the body will react sometimes to radiation by causing fibrosis. And the other thing that we do, because we are so mindful of the importance of the innervation to the penis being super important, is to treat with a shock wave. You know, we're already treating the the area of the penis, the penile shaft, and then we treat the you know in the perineum, uh, where not only do we have the the erectile bodies uh, coming down that way, but also the prostate. But we also sometimes, if somebody has significant back issues, we will treat that area with the shock wave. It's not painful. And it can really improve uh, the quality. So 
this is it. This is what we do. We're excited. Uh, we don't have to do everything on everybody. Not everybody needs the whole shebang, thank God. Uh, but those who do need it, uh, they have options, and they, we're getting really good results. But uh, more important is, as ever, meet everybody and understand what the root cause is for them so we don't either overdo it nor underdo it. Uh, so we can be appropriate in the, the number of, the, you know, the procedure itself. Um, and we can then get good outcomes for them. Because if you're going to put a lot of faith and you're going to put a lot of effort into this, we want to make sure that we can make a difference. Finally, uh, it's all about how do we improve our quality of life, of course. Uh, what is this all about is to have meaningful relationships in our lives that we can share something that is very beautiful, like our intimacy and our ability to, to be intimate with each other. So thank you very much for joining me. I'm so very sorry today that we had the problems with uh, the presentation at the beginning. And um, please, if, if these are issues that are, are affecting you, don't be shy and try to reach people in your area around you that are knowledgeable and can help you overcome these, uh, these problems. Thank you very much. Good night. We'll talk to you another time.